Hello, Inspi family, and welcome to yet another episode of the Inspi Words podcast. Thank you so, so much for joining me on this one. As you know, I always bring you guests that are inspiring and they have wonderful stories. Even today, I have another important guest, a very special guest. Her name is uh, Zama Nenes Kakane. Do you use a double barrel? No, I don't use a double <laughs> barrel, but I found that um, a lot of people, when I say my new surname, yeah. six years later, they still don't know my still surname. Don't know. Anyway. So, social media, I've just... Nenes Kakane, is it to find? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so her name is Zama Nenes Kakane. She is a speech therapist and she's a mother pastor and she's so many things. She's a YouTuber. So please do check out her YouTube channel. She's got quite interesting content there. Thank you so much for, for coming and making time. I know you're quite a busy person. Um, oh, thank you so much for inviting me. You have massive content here. <laughs> Okay, um, just maybe to, to start with, I brought you here because of this one reason. When I was about to get married, yes, you summoned me. <laughs> and my wife doesn't know about this. <laughs> you summoned me together with Uma Mumkaya. Yes. And you sat me down and, and spoke to me just like, you know, um, women at church had, you know, summoned my wife to speak to her about what it means to be married and how to treat a husband. So I... I had to learn from you guys as women who were married how to treat a wife. Two, the second reason why I brought you here is because I know you had a very special relationship with your dad. Tell me, why did you guys summon me on that day? <laughs> yes, Ugyo Yalumfana. We had... <laughs> well, I call it Ugyo Yalumfana because whenever we're going to get married, they always focus on the female. Mm. And society and my experiences actually taught me that we need to be balanced. Sure. Uh, and if we get into a marriage where one counterpart knows what is expected, knows how to, you know, treat you, where else you don't know how to treat her, because women are a difficult species. I've sure. been sure. a woman all my life, mm. and I can say that we don't relate the same way as men. Like, mm. So... I do feel that there is a need because we don't spend a lot of time teaching our boys how to become men. And mm. we expect them to just get there and know exactly. And also, I believe that society, when it comes to speaking to men about marriage, they focus on the surface, how to yes. have sex and, you know... That's um, usually what it is, eh? <laughs> yes. Um, okay, how to satisfy her in bed. And also, even if you are reading magazines mm. um at one point cd jack said um or cautioned females and said most of the books that we read um about males are actually written up uh, by females mm. and most of the male books that um, are meant to teach about women are actually written by males <laughs> so you tell females what to you know how to treat a man but from a point of a man so i think it is quite important that mm. we we share because Marriage also as a as an institution, it's quite vast. And mm. I do think it's one institution for everything else. You go to class for you to have a learner's license. Yeah. You get you, you learn before you actually get a certificate. And with marriage, you get a certificate, then you start the learning journey. So yeah, I thought, no, 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 no. Since <laughs> you are quite close to me, and yes, we've been praying for this wife. <laughs> it was it was very important for me that I say, I'm not saying I gave you everything but to say it's a different world but but one thing that i i felt you guys really prepared me for I, there's a lot of things that i really appreciated about that conversations that conversation we had that really prepared me for what um i was getting into but one thing which is a funny thing is that now my toothpaste has changed <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, I, I, you will not be changing the toothpaste. And I was like, let's have this discussion after you get married. Was I not lying? And now I'm brushing my teeth with some charcoal thing. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, I, I think it's something that's very much important. And for me, uh, I've seen people get married before me, but I'd not seen someone um or maybe they don't show us because i also didn't tell anyone about it anyway but it's something that i find to be rare in in in, in our context because as you were saying it's mostly the lady that gets to mm. be 
you know, instructed, this is how you need to treat yourself, how do you need to carry yourself in the marriage? No, I think also women have been, or some women dream about their wedding, like from the childhood, and yeah. it's a norm in society. Mm. And then when it comes to a man, it's not really a norm. And therefore, men enter a space that they haven't envisioned. I get married, I just want someone to cook for me and clean for me. Wow, there's... there's quite a lot to marriage than that and society is changing um yeah, yeah um i i'm married in the 21st century where women are working and so just finding that balance and actually saying we can't use a recipe that was used by our parents especially in a changing world with changing society some principles yes we can still use them but we do need to talk about marriage as an institution that is also changing because it's not stagnant okay. So I'll, I'll bring you again to talk about marriage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me come I back see this, to men. It's, it's something you're quite passionate about. Uh, and, I, and I think this topic does relate to that, you know. But I want to start this conversation here. Tell me about your relationship with your dad. Wow. Um, I was the third one. Okay, my, I'm from a polygamous family. So um, I was almost the last born. How many wives? Two. Okay. So four from the other four kids from the other wife and would have been four from the other wife, but mm. the son passed on. So okay. I'm the second to last born. Because of my positioning, um, I ended up being very close to my dad. Yeah. And yeah. you guys had a discussion about deficit and when I was reflecting back, I realized that some of or oh, the reason behind our closeness was also related to a lot of the deficit that he had and I needed to fill in that gap or mm. he was blind and therefore he couldn't walk by himself. Mm. And because of that, I was the, I was the girl. I was You're my, always there. I was always there. I met all his friends. We would go, um, like my dad actually taught me how to relate with different genders. We would go with him to play cards or casino. And hence, I grew up being like a typical boyish kind of girl. But <laughs> we had a close relationship. Sure. I could tell him um, when I was a bit older, I could mm. tell him about relationships and tell him what is your experience expectation of a guy um so we had quite a strong relationship i could call him any time to ask him about anything and um he would be quite comfortable i was comfortable with my dad mm. and i don't think many people have that it was an amazing mm. amazing relationship to have with him I find that to be quite interesting because I, I, I'm asking this question because I know the story. Yes. Uh, or at least parts of the story. Yes. It's interesting for me because I know your dad was quite a traditional man. Yes. And, you know, that kind of conversation with a girl child is is something that's quite uncommon in, in with, with, like, traditional men. How, how did that come about? I think because we had spent quite a lot of, time together mm. like there would be conversation where he'd be like zama but that's not what you would expect for a man and then i'll give him also my view mm. um most of our time together would be like four hours straight sitting in hospital setting so mm. what can you do you're gonna talk mm. you're gonna talk about your aspirations initially he wasn't as accepting mm. but i think as i grew and he saw the things i spoke about coming sure. true he understood i think something shifted in him that indeed there's something different about this girl mm. and not only different but she sees things different than in our era mm. and then he accepted some things um and because also he was disabled certain things i think looking back now reflecting he had to let go of because sure. he also depended on us. So mm. um, the idea of a, um, a father, you cannot sleep on your dad's bed. I never grew up with that. I could go and actually sleep on my dad's bed and massage his feet because he would have, you know, been suffering from um, maybe like diabetes and his feet would be sore. Mm. So because of his deficit, it actually caused certain walls to break, to break down, and yeah. allow us to have a very symbiotic. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. where it's, yeah, we, we help each other and we understand yeah. each other and the walls are broken and we, you know, and it became more as I grew and mm -hmm. he could see that I'm also processing things and I have taken some of his mindset because he almost treated me like his boy. Okay. So, so because he treated me like his boy, I thought most things like him. I would analyze like him. So, mm. 
he became comfortable. Did he have the same relationship with the other children? No. No, I always thought I was my dad's favorite. And that even at home, we may not say it, but I was like my dad's favorite child. Mm. But also, I never got into trouble because I was a late bloomer, man. I was mm. a late bloomer, even with the boys, man. I, I love men. I love men. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, but I wasn't dating in grade 11. My first boyfriend... Lord was in grade 12 <laughs> thinking. So I was a late bloomer. I see. And we never had issues. I was naughty. Mm. Don't get me wrong. I was naughty. I did get a lot of hidings. Mm. But um, in terms of naughtiness and the things that maybe my sister would get into trouble about, I never, I never. So, so looking back, um, Zama, how did being raised by a blind father shape your childhood? Um, one, I appreciate life more. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those people who plans quite a lot for their life. I'm, I'm laughing because I'm thinking, <laughs> Mota, in the conversation you guys had, um, spoke about something like that, that it's also a deficit. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the things are also a deficit, but because I know how short life can be, I tend to plan mm. i tend to i can i can be extreme maybe mm. i'm extreme about money because it wasn't a thing that we had growing up and but also i became an advocate so whenever i see someone who's disabled i'm always that person who says how can i empower them even in my life even if people are not disabled i'm always looking for a way to say how can we make this better? How, wh how what, what can I contribute to your life? And even when I was with my dad growing up, they used to call me Ashlom Fundis. <laughs> Funny enough, now. <laughs> singing no. <Ashla> <laughs> I, don't, wow. I don't even know. But yeah, I think I appreciate life more. I always want to be better. And I always think I'm, I'm cautious. Sometimes I'm like, even with diet, Baba, yeah, 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 mm, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm scared of certain things. Like I would be very militant sometimes, even when there's no need to be. Mm. So I think those are the positives and the negatives. But oh, I'm sure. also a resilient person, a person who says, if I want something, I'm going to work and I'm going to try and get it. So I think that all came from the fact that I know how short life can be. And I appreciate what I have because I know... Oh, and also I have some insecurities because... Of Is it? Yeah, some, man. Uh, no, don't lie to us. No, I'm not lying. You like, and I insecurities. Had, you know what? Um, sometimes like you're also, the most confident person I know. I had to reflect back and be like, where is my overconfidence coming ah, in? It's a deficit. It's at, also a deficit. And also sure. when I married my husband, um, when I was getting married, I was dressed and I was gorgeous. Mm. And I had a moment of being tearful because the one person I would have wanted him to oh, yes. look at me yeah. and say, my daughter, you are gorgeous, couldn't see me. Mm. And I had a moment of just like boiling and being like, oh, okay, Dama, are you doing this? And mm. with my husband, I've had to say, listen, now that I understand me, I'm like, listen, you have to tell me that I'm gorgeous yeah. because I haven't heard it from a man. Yes, I've heard it from, you know, from, guys. From other gentlemen. Yeah, from other gentlemen who want me to be their people and stuff like that. But I wasn't hearing it enough. Mm. And therefore, I, I became confident because that was my saying that, ah, uh, I'm going to be confident. I'm not going to seek no one's approval because, mm. you know, but it is a deficit. But my husband knows, Shem, he tries. Ah, he tries. Baggit man of yeah, God. Yeah, man of God. Ah, Baggit man of God is ah, doing God. well. Baggit. So, so we, we will get to the man of God because I also have some questions I want to ask you okay. about, about how you got there. Um, but I'm also just trying to probe this whole relationship that you had with your dad. Mm. She, he could not see you. Uh, and could not tell you that you are beautiful, but how did, how did he affirm you yeah. as as a young girl? Because I know from our conversations there was a lot of affirmation that came from him. Um, my dad was not gonna be the one who's gonna be like, hey, hey, my, my you are loving. Let me give you a hug. Mm. But his actions, and I've had moments where he would cry maybe because of an achievement. Sure. And he would always maybe also bring it to him and be like, my kids have done all they could do and now I'm lacking. But he's well done. 
is more than 100 well done from my mom. Because mm. I know when he said that, it meant that, yes, I've definitely done, because you don't get a lot of well done. Yeah, sure, like, sure. Uh, no, he's not going to give you a well done for nothing. Mm. Um, so when I would get a well done, or he would come and listen to me, like I used to act as a kid, he would yeah. come to my place, even though he couldn't see me, just to sit and be in the crowd to hear sure. me recite a speech. And that meant a world because I knew he couldn't see me, but that thing that he came, and it would take a lot for him to come, but he would walk there and mm. come. So those were some of the actions that he would do. He would call me Ustendo, like, yes, you know, when yes. he calls me Ustendo, where yes. then? Then I know, then I know that, you know, I'd like, yeah, no, we, we're doing good. And it goes back to, he almost grew me like, a, grew me like, his boy, mm -hmm. because I would be affirmed when he calls me by my name, by my surname. And mm -hmm. I know that I've done well when he says, Stand right when they got up on in, or he would do something for me. And yeah, mm -hmm. so that's how he affirmed me by actions. He sure, wasn't going to sure. tell you all the time, but his action would show that I'm proud of you. Yeah, that, that, I'm asking these questions because when we talk about this conversation about fathers, it's often the 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 young boys that are seen as needing the father you know the father figure i think as a female child actually my dad was a man who set a standard about mm. the kind of men i would date mm. i knew that i would want a man who would be able to protect my family okay. hence i got a military man <laughs> <laughs> it's good I, I got it it's good you know um but that also came from my dad like yeah. even though he was blind i remember an event where Okay, one of the boys dis you know disrespected our household. He came with his shambok, forgot that he does that guy had a gun. My oh. dad came up with just his stick and he was like, You will not do that in my household. You know. So I saw a man being able mm. to fight for us. Even when he was blind, he took a job at one point, you know, when the RDP houses were being built. He took a job um guarding or being a security. And now that <laughs> I was older, I'm like wow. Johnny, you know, you didn't like I would go with my dad in these events or I would be sending him he loved tea. So I would be sending him his tea and just thinking now that I was older, I'm like, any anything could have happened to him. Yeah. But he was that man who would put his family first. Sure, sure. Um, like small things like we grew up poor. So like if we say we had eight sausages. There was only eight sausages. And if someone knocked, he would hear that someone is knocking. And he knew that our household, if someone comes in, we'll have to give him food. Then he will call me and be like, when then? I counted that just take one sausage from my plate so that uh, you can give the visitor a sausage oh, and wow. I eat one. And those things were some of the things I learned early that a man sacrificed for his family. Sure, sure. And, like it may not be that he took me to the... You know, he never was able to take me maybe on a holiday, but mm. he was present, he affirmed, and his action showed me that this is what a man is. Mm. You know, sometimes the father figure that a woman has in their life, this is what people say. Yes. And I want to hear your thoughts on it. Mm. That the father figure that a woman has in their life ends up being the standard. You also, in, in your case, but do you think it's fair? <laughs> <sighs> For me, it was the standard, but I also knew that there were certain things because I was critical. Yeah. My dad was also a traditional man and I sure, knew sure. I didn't want that. So as you grow, yes, your dad becomes, as you know, your becomes the standard. But as you grow up and you understand yourself, mm -hmm. you then go and say, there are certain aspects I love about my dad. And it's an honest truth to have with yourself and say, there are certain things I love about my dad. But, mm. and when I want a man, don't, don't be below my dad. I'm sorry. <laughs> We get sensitized to a certain mm, treatment. Mm, mm. Um, and that is why when, when I with a female who's maybe been abused, I'm like, first start to desensitize yourself because that was your norm. Mm. Because you might go for a male who might abuse you. Sure. So subconsciously something happens, man. Our mm. parents shape our subconscious mind. Mm. And that's where the belief system is. That's sure, where sure. if a man is in your life, they tell you what's possible. What is mm. your ceiling? You know, you know how to please a man by pleasing your dad. Mm. And then when you want a man, some of the things that you will do, you'll do things that you saw your mom do or whatever to try mm. and please a man because that was the prototype that you saw before mm. you. Mm. So... I do think even with male, it's very similar with your mother's guys. Mm. As much as 
Ningangasho, but today is all about <laughs> men. So we'll just come back to, to the men part. What is fair? Define fairness. <laughs> it's 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 hard to say. <laughs> But um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go on that one because I also want to ask you, I know you talk a lot with young women. You've mm, got mm. a whole squad around you. Yes. You've got young women that look up to you. Mm. And some of them might have grown up mm. in, in spaces that did not have a father figure. How do you help them navigate this whole relationship with men and what it means you know, to, to, to have a man in your life? I think... My focus has been first to identify that there's a gap because mm. sometimes we walk around thinking there's not, everything is fine. Yeah. We have learned uh, to walk with the crutch because a man is needed. And I'm not saying this to glorify men, but there's an aspect that my husband brings in my daughter's life that I cannot bring. Mm. I am a, like examples. I'm, a, I'm strict, right? But I can get soft. And then he'll be like, but you need to his biggest thing is like Ibaukos, be like an eagle. Mm. There's certain time where you need to be hard and be stern and be firm. Mm. Um, there are things where, for instance, I can speak to Norm and, and give an instruction. Sometimes just one word from, from the father understands everything. It's like I'm, <laughs> I've been speaking gibberish. So females or every species needs a female and a male mm. so that we can understand the world differently. I have a I have my my nieces and nephews with me mm. and I was cautious that even the guy that I, I would date because some of the male figures haven't been good male figures in my life and I've identified mm. it and I made a conscious decision that even when I date I want a man that I date to be an example to my nephews mm. because they also need to see a man mm. you know so I need a standard for instance, you asked me if it was fair. Yeah. If there is no standard that I can, if there is no starting point, then I don't know what I'm looking for. And then everything, if I don't have a standard of a man, every man will be my man mm. because I will not know what I'm looking sure, for. Sure, sure, sure. So one needs to, if the, that standard might shift with time, mm. but at least there's a ruler, there's a measure, you know, mm. that you know what you are looking for. There is a need for you to set a standard, maybe using your brother, using your father, so that you don't go out there just accepting each and every person who comes into your life. Mm. Um, and it does shift with time, gay. You have the father yeah. who sort of sets the standard yes. to some degree. Yes. And then you have um, the scriptures. Yes. What is the relationship between the two? I think in every guy should strive to be the father like Christ. Mm. Um, we come from all our families with the traditional ones. Mm. And I always say that if we did even marriage as how Bible says it mm. should be done, mm. I think then our marriages will thrive. Um, the Bible, when it speaks of a man or even a husband, it will say, or an elder, a bishop, it will say a husband of one wife mm. who's able to take care of his family, whose kids are mm. able to listen to him. Mm. So that standard is saying, as a man, man, you die for your family. It mm. says Christ loved his wife that he died for it, you know. Mm. So it is setting a, a, a standard of what a man should be like. Mm. A man should be a sacrificial guy, someone who who leads, but who's able also to have people who can pour into him. Um, I don't think Jesus or Jesus had the Holy Spirit and the Father to still guide him. Mm. So a man should not be someone who's isolated, whose view is the last view. Sure. You know, um, like Jesus would say, let this, if this is your will, then let me submit to the will. So a man is able to still submit to a certain will. So... I think they do link mm. very much and we do need teaching that are going to focus on those because when the Bible was initially taught, there is some apartheid or <laughs> <laughs> certain views that were introduced. Yeah. And also we have to also realize some errors that were there, a patriarchal error. Like some scriptures that we don't like, maybe for instance, it would say a man would leave his father and mother and mm. go cleave to his wife. It doesn't say a female, mm. it doesn't say a female, mm. but because we were living in a certain society that said it was female, mm. 
we, we are not biblical in that sense. We are being traditional when we are doing certain mm -hmm. marriage ceremonies and saying, <laughs> no, where now you are leaving your house sure, sure. only to the husband. But yeah, yeah I, th I think there's, there, there has to be a conversation that needs to be had mm. um, about scriptures and culture. Yes. I also want to come back to this question of, mm. um, of the, the husband. Yes. You have uh, Ukomanda. Yes. How, how, like, what is it that you looked at when he came to you? And what is it about him that made you, you know, accept him as one who could be your, your husband? Sacrifice. Um, and um, he's also, I was looking for sacrifice. I was looking for someone who's teachable. Mm -hmm. I was also looking for someone who loves me because I don't believe in I in daughter would learn to love you. Yo. <laughs> eh, eh, no, no, no. The man must love you. Mm. And he showed me and someone who also put me priority. He's a busy guy. He's a he's a minister of the word. And I, I have a problem sometimes with <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man of God <laughs> and how they prioritize. And um he had to prove to me in a certain manner that I'm important and he okay. would, um, and he did that man, we would be in, in going there to preach men and he would worry about my safety. He can leave mm -hmm. the tent to come say, Hey, don't, 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 don't drive here because there's a ditch. Mm -hmm. And I would see that, yes, he could have been focusing on the tent, which is what his main thing mm -hmm. is as a revivalist, if there's such a terminology, but he would, Put my safety first. It is a thing, Yoguti. I've I've dated men of God. Oh, Jesus. Yo. I've dated some men of God and they they have a struggle differentiating a calling and and family. Mm. And it was something that I said even when I was dating, I was like, I, I can't. I, I can't because I I I speak to a lot of pastors' kids that have a challenge because their fathers or whoever, whether it's their mother who was in the ministry, was not involved in their life. So that's what I was looking for. I was looking for someone, yes, who's going to be a minister if the Lord calls him there, but who also going to see us as priority. Mm. So now there, there are ladies ne, yes. that have dated men of God like you. Yes. And they have not had great experiences. Yes. Some of them feel that actually maybe, you know, Christian guys are not, what would you say? Man, you haven't dated all Christian guys. Guys, <laughs> sometimes we just like to, it's, we like to, what's the word? Magnify. Mm. You've dated three guys, guys. The world has got uh, over 10 billion people. You've dated three Christian guys. And now you color all Christian. It's like you dating just one white guy. And then you're saying all white guys are like this. Mm. Uh, but also at the same time, I think as ladies, we need to reflect. Sure. On, and it's something that when we're having these discussions with ladies, I say, but guys, we cannot compare certain things. Uh, for instance, compare Ubrada Wasezweni in the world with yeah. a Christian guy, for instance, who was saved at grade 11, and then <laughs> think Uguti is going to have the same game. Ish. Like, didn't. You should know, good. are you looking for character or are you looking for game? Mm. And Yo, yes, we, are you looking for character or are you looking for game? Yes. It, what exactly are you looking for in a guy? And if you can clarify and sit with yourself and be honest, you want, you know, is it a skill that someone can be taught? Mm. Because some of us, singers, friends, all of us. <laughs> and then we sat there in a class, someone, and mm. that is why I said earlier, I was looking for someone who was teachable. Mm. Look for someone who's 80% what you are looking for. Not a man of God, but a guy I dated, and he said, 100%, we will tell you see my sister, you will not get it in a man. <laughs> <laughs> it, had, it had when when i was dating him and you know but that what he said to me as i grew older though i understood that's the truth though mm, mm. you will not get a hundred percent person sure. and it's something that you have to be honest with yourself and say what are the things what are the non-negotiable mm. with uzama mm. and what are the things that i can say we can work on sure and not to say that I'm going to change you, but that I would 
love them to spice our relationship. But Zama, that's not an easy thing to do. I'm I'm just thinking, and I'm 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 I almost said I want to be the devil's advocate. No, it's fine. But I'm, I'm, I want to speak. I want to take myself and put myself in the shoes of a lady who's been uh, trapped by these relationships, and I, I have their perception of these men shaped by those experiences. How do you how do you deal with that? What what is it that you did One of to the change things. the perception you had? after those relationships you've been you'd been through to be able to now welcome yeah. love one of the things i've had to tell myself is that church is like a hospital mm. some people as much as we date them there by the keyboard or they singing <laughs> one <laughs> one a gift your moon to does not tell me anything about their maturity sure key two People are like, there, it's a hospital. Some people are responding to the medication, which is the Christ, the gospel. Sure, sure. Some people are rebel. Actually, the, the antibiotic they've been, they are, your wife will tell me, they are um, king. That, that antibiotic word. resistant. They are resistant. Are to a pharmacist. They yes, resistant. come on, come on, come on. <laughs> the, the, the pharmacist has done well. Some people are <laughs> resistant to church. And I've had to, to actually say, Church is an institution. Yeah. You find all different kind of people. Yeah. And maybe also look, because sometimes um come once said Wuti, one of his biggest wishes that when we break up, we could all sit down and say, uh, tell me what were my weak mm. points mm. and I tell you what. Because sometimes we break up and we we are trapped, guys. I'm a relationship. And if you analyze Mm. Uti, what made that relationship to not work? You mm. will find Uti, sometimes it was maybe your maturity or the mm. other guy's maturity. And it was not just church. And because we found them at church, then we say church is bad. Sure, sure. So I always like to say, let's be honest, guys. Some of us are fed, and but we are still going to the gym. Mm. We don't leave gym because they are fed people. And we mm. don't start saying, no, we're not going to exercise. No, we're not going to... You know, we're not going to open our hearts to dream because we didn't sure. lose weight. Sure, sure. But what needs to happen is that, oh, what I've had to teach myself is that I must have boundaries. Mm. Um, maybe the guy who trapped me, what what could I have done better? No, sure. I didn't know them enough. I only maybe known them as, oh, brother, why should my and never took time enough to get to know them mm. and that's how upra that was in me hey man god because yeah but but now i also want like an insider perspective on this yeah because i know you talk a lot with like uh, pearls of virtue yes um there are conversations that are happening amongst you as ladies yes um based on your experience of those conversations what is it that you think gents don't understand that females are territorial. Let's start there. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's um it's always males that are put that they are territorial. Yeah. And I've found that with with my guy friends, I've had to say, she would like to be safe around you. Mm. Uh, one, for us Christians, most of our relationship, mm. we don't have public of display of affection when the relationship is starting because, okay, as a person, as Uzam, I'm not going to display all my relationship because also sure. I'm trying to keep the number down and the number <laughs> of people who know about who I've dated. <laughs> so most of our relationships are hidden, right? Mm. And while they are hidden, you um, most Christian brothers, because they are gifted, mm. people are attracted to the gift. Mm. And what brothers then struggle doing is creating barriers or boundaries to say, um, for instance, you can't be oh best friend, you know, Asha, and now the Asha is coming to your room Yo. or doing all your parties. I would question as as your girlfriend if I'm coming, where is my sport? Mm, mm. Um, so that's one creating a safe space where I know that I'm the queen of your kingdom. Mm. Because we we don't wanna second guess if we're the queen of your kingdom. We just wanna know we mm. are. You know, that allows us to thrive and know that we are loved. That's one. Two, brothers, sometimes they hide behind the gift when the sisters are trying to teach them something. Because they think, Guti, I'm gifted in this area. That means I excel in all the other areas. Okay. It's the same technique I'll use there. And they don't realize that 
for them to be good in preaching, they've had to put in hours mm. of studying the scripture, knowing what is expected. And that's what you should do with also a female that you date. You need to learn her. You need to mm. speak with her. So, so let's, let's, let's come out of the, the dating context. Okay. Because we work with, with guys, we work with ladies, you know, we, we, we are friends with ladies. Yeah. Um, but how do, what is it that you think gentlemen, even outside of, you know, the romantic relationship context, need to understand about their interaction with ladies? One thing with guys, one, or oh, females, let's start with females. Yeah. I've spoken to males and males said to me, if I've not said, I love you, don't take, <laughs> don't take it as I love you. Sure, right? sure, sure. So the struggle is because sometimes in the friendly with all ladies, you uh, can we, marinate we, we, we five. Can't, we can't we can't be be enemies now. Any, what do but you, you mean? can't be marinating all five of us. If you catch fire, is it hey, my fault? Hey, no, 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 no. There's many fish in the sea. Focus <laughs> on one fish. Yeah. Um and that's where most Christian ladies have been hurt by guys. Yeah. Because guys think Ugutinje, we are still, what's the terminology tender these days? We are still vibing. Yeah. Uh, we are still vibing. And not knowing Uguti, when you vibe with a female, I bought guys we create. And it's also a, a vulnerability side on a female, but mm. we love hearing good things. Mm. So when you vibe with us, we think it's leading to a relationship. You are buying me flowers. You are buying, like, I'm thinking it's leading. And then mm. brother doesn't say, the next thing your brother, I'm going to go Hey. Wow. How? 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 And then, then brothers, then sisters say, we don't want to date brothers at church. Mm. Because then brothers also don't say when they're going to, choose there are people so we, we must announce stop. now that we we are choosing i have chosen no but i think prior to you saying that i've chosen yeah break the other ties make it clear sure because sure. because you had been marinating and you were leading people on to think and that's the biggest struggle mm. sisters were led on yo sisters were led on Really, there's quite a number of sisters who are led on by brothers. I remember this is this is, is something very important, and I think there has to be also a conversation alone mm -hmm. on that issue because I was speaking at this other church about mm -hmm. issues of mental health. Yes, and I mentioned how in the churches people get hurt in relationships, mm. but because in most of our traditional churches there is still this idea that, you know, young people, you should not date and all of this. So even when you were hurt mm. in dating or even by this marination process that never even ma materialized into something like a relationship, you can't talk to anyone about that because you will be judged. And, and a lot of people get hurt in those kinds of spaces because of those kinds of things. And I think there is... A, a big conversation that we need to have about that as as Christians in 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 these traditional churches, but my my question here because I think this one is is long. Mm. I don't even want to to get deep into it. Yes. My my other question is: I know you've had a lot of boys staying at your house. Yes. How do you speak to those boys in a way that they learn? to understand how they need to relate with ladies, not only in, term, in the context of relationships, but with ladies in general? Wow. Um, with my boys, what I've done, they are now teenagers or oh, they are in their 20s. Um, I, I apply the show and tell. Mm. Um, two, what I've also tried to do with them, we'll have conversations. Mm. Um, I would ask them to cook, for instance, some of, um, just to break certain stereotypes. Um, and then while I'm asking them to cook. So you're not abusing them. <laughs> no, I'm not abusing them. I'm preparing them for marriage in the 21st century. Sure. I would be like, a female would also love, this is what I would love, you know, uh, maybe I'll ask him to make me breakfast and then the mm. next 
conversation we're going to have is even your wife, female, this is how you feel a, a female's cup, you know. Like, you know, when we say our cup is empty, yeah. what we're speaking about is act of service. Mm. And most traditionally, the act of service have been shifted to no, we need to do it for the males, especially when it comes to the area of serving. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be like, you know, when you give me breakfast in bed, now we're having a conversation. Mm. This is what like, makes me feel loved. And even your wife will feel loved, you know. Mm. Um, when it comes to things like birthdays, I, I try to say, let's celebrate your birthday. Because even with all of them, they'll be like, no one has ever celebrated my birthday. And I'll be oh, like, I actually don't know. Like, like don't, for me, for example, it was never a thing in my family. It's only now that the people around me yes. um, celebrate birthdays. And I always have a difficult time. My wife asks me, what should we do for your birthday? And I'm like... And exactly, I want I, a camera that cost one hundred thirty nine thousand. <laughs> wow! Uh, yeah, because you guys, <laughs> I know. Even if at home we never had a celebration for my birthday, sure. but everyone will know that it's my mm. birthday, even at school. Yeah. And so I'm quite mindful that that doesn't happen on the other counterparts. So mm. I would celebrate their birthdays and I'll have discussions where like, so I'll be like, so what are you appreciating? What are your prayer points? What are your, yeah. because I'm getting the, the men to talk. Because sometimes I'm like, men don't talk. Mm. Um, but it's it's male talk. Apparently you guys have a terminology for for. We say you don't talk and you say it's male talk or TV Jakes <laughs> would say it's he emotions. Yes. But I need to concentrate them to this is how a sure, female sure, relates. Sure. Because some of the struggles that you guys have when you are married is that your was wakulumfaz. How do you deal with this? And mm -hmm. it's because even though you had sisters, that was not like we never talk when you had shut the door, no one was allowed to we knew and most of the time especially sometimes if you are first born second born they be like uncle say put him to busy me again go say with his books yeah. <laughs> and therefore you you haven't had irritant i can't call us females irritant <laughs> but you haven't had someone who will come and speak to you yes. and in marriage that's what is going to happen you're going to speak to me Yo. because that's almost like the expectation we we married <laughs> You're going to talk. Sure. So it's, it's just expose them to environments and spaces where they are going to be expected to talk. I really think that is important um, because some of the biggest challenges we have around issues of gender-based violence, you know, abuse of women and children is coming out of this culture um, that reproduces a particular kind of man that until we break that cycle of reproduction through these kinds of conversations, and, and this is why it was one of the reasons why I wanted you, because you've been very open about breaking these kinds of cultural um, practices and, and cultural ways of, of raising young men that reproduces the kind, the kind of man that is not suitable for the kind of society that we have. And you you have you have shown it in how you interact with the boys that you are raising in your household. But what what would you say to someone who's raising boys? Maybe my first advice would be think of I know it's easy to cushion your boy and sure. you know, but think of what what kind of a man would I want to date? Mm. And reverse engineer from there. What what that means is I would want a man who's able to talk. Yeah. And therefore, can can we talk? Um, how was your test? And they will give you one word. Like mm. we, we we still like when you get three words, you are good. Like, you mm. know, you but let's talk. Let's talk about budget. Kiss kiss them even when they don't want to. <laughs> um because they are going, ooh, we are having men who are not affectionate because Yo. affection was not modeled. Mm. And we also yes, even with our parents, I've I'm, I'm, I'm 31. I've never seen my mom and dad kiss. Sure. The only picture I saw Mtlampe was at their wedding. Now we need to reverse engineer and say, I would want a man who will be able to hold my hand and kiss me. Mm. And therefore, when I'm raising a boy, mm. I would want a boy who's able to relate to the female, mm. who's able to ask. When I'm moody, I want the boys to say, you are not, you are not okay. Mm. Sometimes they won't say it and I'll be like, but yesterday I was not okay, guys. And, mm. and then we'll have these discussions because mm. 
some of the cues are not innate within them. They cannot pick it up. My female yeah. friends can sure. because they've harnessed the skill to do so. They can hear it from maybe the tone of my voice. Mm. And with male, it's not. So that's why earlier I said some of the skills can be taught. Mm. Then you sit and you say, Siazi, because some of the fight you're going to have is, but you guys said I'm fine. And I'm going to, but my tone was not saying I'm fine. And you're like, but Yo. you said I'm fine. And yeah. so teach the non-verbal cues. I have two things I want to say to you. Mm. Um, one of the things about me, I, I, am a, I am an open and vulnerable man, especially to my wife. Mm. Um, but I once spoke about this experience. I was talking about mental health at the church, a particular mm. church. Mm. And I made an example about my experience during PhD where I had a mental breakdown. Mm. I found myself sitting in my room and I was alone at the time. Mm. There was a lockdown. I was sitting in my room and crying tears. And I called this couple to come and fetch me because I was so afraid what could happen to me. Mm. After that talk, the elders of the church mm -hmm. pulled me aside and asked me, what do you think your wife will say when you say these kinds of things and you're just about to get married? As a guy, you should not be crying. There is this kind of expectation for men in our society to be superhuman as if they are immune to pain. But at the same time, there is this call, this growing call for men to accept and understand their vulnerability and allow themselves to be vulnerable enough to be in touch with their emotions. And I think it's causing quite a lot of conflict because even with, with ladies, Sometimes you don't want a soft man, in inverted commas, a soft man. Mm. But at the same time, you don't want a hard man. Whew. How do we as gents balance the two? Wow. Um, I think it goes back to the issue of marriage and culture. Sure. Which voice is now speaking? Is it a voice of Christ? Yeah. Um, or how marriage is put? Is it biblical what is being said mm. or is it being cultural mm. and then i'm gonna step back and say i've also been guilty of um i've had an encounter where um in a with a particular somebody it was a romantic relationship mm. and the person were in the middle of breakup mm. and the person broke up and cried at <laughs> i don't mean to laugh i'm just <laughs> like okay at um, a mall, mm. um, at a shop, we are eating there, brother cried. You broke up with him at the mall, at a shop. How about now, women? <laughs> no. Okay, anyway. <laughs> we had sat down. I don't down. mean to judge you. <laughs> <laughs> it goes back to uh, why I'm narrating this story yeah, yeah. is, one, it's okay to cry. One, it says Jesus wept. Mm. Our standard of manhood, I would like us to, for a Christian man, to be Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And Jesus wept. Mm. He felt emotion, and mm. the Bible is clear. It says he wept. Mm. But there are spaces where it's okay. And I do believe with your wife, because mm. that is the one person that the Bible says they were naked and unashamed. So with your wife, it's mm. okay. In therapy, it's okay. With someone that you trust, it's okay to cry. I've also been guilty because looking back, I was shook. <laughs> <laughs> when that happened, I didn't... What shook you? What was going through your mind at the time? I had never seen a man cry. That's also another thing. That it's a deficit on its own. It's a deficit on its own because, okay, I've had my dad cry, but I didn't see him. He didn't like... <sighs> So, the other day, we had a conversation. I was like, but also, like, be careful how you cry. Like, mm. because we still want to feel safe. But at So, what is same, unsafe about me crying, Zam? Crying, so, but don't cry like our son Ali Temba. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it's a thing that we need to discuss also, because it's also a deficit within us, because mm. we haven't fully defined what we want. Yeah, I but think, what I we think, know. I think that's a, that's where the key is. 
we haven't fully defined what we fully want, mm. but we what we know now, mm. this thing is evolving. Mm. What we know now is that we want men to be able to tell me anything. Mm -hmm. What we are struggling with is a man, you are married with him, and then he commits suicide. You never even know you are struggling. Sure, sure. So we want, because we've I've been in spaces where Maybe I'm I'm friends to both these guys and they are going through very similar and they are able to come and confide to me. Mm. But just be them talking together would have given each person skills to cope. Sure. But I am a confident and thus I can't say Usman Mani has similar issues, issues that you are yeah. going through and these are men who are besties also society is to blame sure sure because it hasn't opened up for males to speak mm. um when we look at what has been happening in our society we will laugh at a man mm. who was mental who had a mental issue like that mother said mm. so i think we need to change the narrative and say how does a man crying look like? It's very much important that we as gens, amongst ourselves, we also create those safe spaces. Because I think sometimes as, as gens, we are also very hard on each other. Mm. Even the way that we joke, we're very hard on each other. Sometimes we joke about things that are hurtful, mm. not being aware that we're actually hurting the other guy and even the other guy who's being hurt by the joke we're making will not point it out that actually i don't appreciate the way you are talking about me or the joke that you are making about me because we do not want to come across as overly sensitive or softies and all of those kinds of things which are labels that you know society has given to guys that are being able to stand up for themselves in those kinds of spaces and, and, and talk about things that are actually affecting them negatively. And I want us to wrap this up. I know we can talk and talk and talk. Yeah. There's a young man mm. listening to this, mm. 18 years, 25 years, 30 years, listening to this, thinking about some of the conflicting ideas, the internal conflict that young men experience in a society that has so many negative experiences mm. that are caused by men mm. and there are so many insults mm. directed towards men because of things that some of the men are doing mm. how do you what would you say to that young man to build up his confidence in who he is as a young man living in south africa today hmm. what a question what a deep question um, at the back of my mind, I have that as much as we live in a society that says good guys don't win, mm. I would like to actually highlight that in the spaces that I've been in, we're still looking for good guys. Sure. Mm. Morally, we, want, we still want someone who's sound. I know society has said it's all about what's in between your legs and Yo. we can discuss that, but we want young men to know who they are, mm. to be morally sound, mm. to still be protectors. Mm. And my father used to say something to me as I was growing up, and he's like, not everyone is going to like you. You are not money. Eesh. And we are living in a society where things that are valuable, are, are the priceless things that are valuable are no longer appreciated sure. publicly. Mm. But... In secret spaces where we are, that's what we need. We need a young man who knows what they want, where they are going. And even if they are not sure yet, who are striving towards them. I have a daughter. I would want he, her to marry a guy who will treat her like a queen, mm. who would love her. So that man needs to know what love is. Mm. That man needs to know that if they are broken, they need to heal. Sure. Because I don't want them to bleed on my daughter. It's important to give men a language where they can speak about what they are going through. Sure, sure. So young men have spaces and places mm. where you can go and speak. Speak out in areas that are called safe spaces. Mm. No, thank you so much, Zam. I really appreciate you. I always, always, always appreciate the conversations we had. And today I had a chance to give the Inspi family 
an insight into you know some of the conversations that we have and i really really appreciate you and your husband and all the work that you do and the support that you have given us thank you so much Mto. um yeah to invite me in this massive content <laughs> wow it's actually an honor uh but i'm uza mama is kakane on facebook um we lead a church uh takane community worship center that's what you're gonna find us as on Facebook. We're still working on being on other platforms, but yeah, that's where you will find me mostly. And your YouTube channel? Oh, my YouTube channel. <laughs> my YouTube channel is Zamamane Niskakane, and we are evolving and growing. <laughs>